And then I got this today from you also. Jonathan, this just came in. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, yes. I don't know. Barbara has that. I just uh, no. thought that I should forward it to you since yeah. there was a line I had for a point. printed it out. So. There's like a. It looks pretty good. There's a breakdown. Yeah. Well, each. Yeah, by all these different companies. Well, each town yeah. pays. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Start at 5.33. Mean <clears throat> order. First thing on the agenda is public comment. Anything to say public? I am not public at all. Okay, <laughs> good. Thank you. Anyway, well said. Uh, so we'll go right into the budget uh, 2021. Um, first thing we have here is our friends from the fire department. And they have a little uh, letter here for us. Uh, so let's start off. This, uh, there's two parts of the budget under discussion tonight, although the town does uh, support the department in other ways financially. Uh, with such things as maintaining the firehouses, physical exams, and an incentive program. Um, the things we're here to talk about tonight are start with the operations part of the budget, which is line um, 177, and the ambulance line 178. On our records, we have those coming in at 69,000 for fire department operations and $31,000 for the ambulance. And what we have submitted here, I believe on page uh, one and two is a preliminary budget here. This sheet here, which has some A's and F's on it, which luckily are not grades, but they are, stands for ambulance and fire. Um, and those first two pages um, total up to $100,000, which roughly, um, which correspond to $100,000 on these two lines, and then it's been broken out with a little um, A's and F's to show you where which things are covered by the ambulance. So, um, any commentary on this part of the budget or any thoughts, any questions from the board? Uh, I certainly have commentary. So uh, some preliminary things, since apparently it would be reported. So I'm John Laporta, and I am the treasurer of the fire department. And Patience Lindholm is the secretary, uh, and will be taking over as treasurer. And Patience is the person responsible for all the work of creating the document. So thank you, Patience. Um, a couple of things to note, and we reviewed this previously, but I'd like to say it again. This year, we've uh, completely revamped our categories for our record keeping of how to track what we spend. So it's a little bit of a challenging year looking at what we're proposing from last year because of those category changes. So it's hopefully a one-time transition next year would be much easier to look at that. Uh, another point I would like to say, uh, there are kind of two things that, that uh, follow together. 
when you looked at your lines uh, 177, 178, right? So you've got basically the operations for the fire department and then you have the ambulance separated out. Historically, the ambulance uh, didn't exist when the fire department began. So what we're seeing here is, a, is in a sense, kind of an antiquated system because it was just the fire department. And then when the ambulance was added in the 70s, I believe, that's probably when they said, okay, here's the component for the ambulance with the additional costs for the ambulance. But since then, the department has grown. It does many things. There's fire components. There's ambulance components. There's rescue components. A lot of them are joined together. We share the same facility, the same office expenses, the same uh, you know, building itself. So to make that kind of distinction might be something that the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance want to review. Um, because it seems a little bit silly to just say we have everything and then the ambulance in today's world. Um, we present a very detailed budget proposal, which we're going to review. Uh, so you'll always have that in front of you. But to try to pull out ambulance, in a sense, is a little bit uh, challenging at best because there are many things that overlap. So we, you might think about that in the future. Um, and finally, I would also say as a preliminary that uh, that the fire department actually uh, provides for the town. There's nothing that the town gives to the fire department. There are town buildings, there are town equipment. Uh, the members of the fire department volunteer their time to the fire department and then volunteers its services to the town. So when we're thinking about budget, it really is not quite right to think about this is what we're budgeting, you know, to sort of for the department. The department doesn't receive things from the town. The department gives things from the town. What we're doing, I'm also on the finance board of the town, what we're doing is budgeting for town buildings and town equipment. And town operate, the town operations pay for the operations part of it. So it's, it sounds like semantics, but it's important to realize it's the town that we're funding and providing for, not for an uh, independent company. Having said that, nuts and bolts. Um, we did talk about this on Thursday. And patients, please add and interrupt whatever when I make a mistake. Um, we did do this, went, went over this briefly on Thursday, but I think you did not have this document in front of you then. So you can see that it has our basic uh, a breakdown of the large components, communications, computer and internet. All these things are down and itemized out. As Gordon said, you can see how the ambulance uh, and fire, uh, actually it's ambulance and everything else on the department line. If you don't see an A or an F, on, on your line, all of that would be fire. So basically, everything on this document for operations would go under your line 177 fire, except the things that are labeled A. And some have A and F because it's obvious those are joined. It's just hard to uh, to do better than that on our document. Um, I want to say one other thing about this. I'm a accountant, and I did zero-based budgeting. Means I went back to the beginning. I didn't say, well, we did last year, we're going to do 5% more or 2% more. I went back and said, okay, how many pages do you need? How many radios? Do you need any? Okay, you don't need any of those. So we started from the bottom. We tried to build, and this is what we come up with. It's one of the advantages of having to do transition to new categories. You're forced to go that route. You can't rely on past categories because they don't necessarily fit. So, so even though the budget numbers are up, they're accurate of that, uh, that basis. The main things I would say go right to your page two of three. It's, it's the, it's the, uh, the first two pages are the operations budget. That's the first page operations. The bottom of the second page, you can see where it says total of A is the 30,270. Are you seeing that? And then F is 70,010, and they add up to 180. So the A is the ambulance, fire is is everything else, and there's our total. So in an attempt to try to line up with what your lines 177 and 178 say, those are the two, right? 177 uh -huh. is the two. Mm -hmm. And it's a significant increase from last year. The significant increase is largely in two areas. Uh, the first would be vehicle repairs and maintenance. And that is directly above the very last itemized line on your page two. And we talked about that on Thursday. 
that was because of a large repairs needed last year, largely due to sedimentation of our water holes and ponds that damaged the pumps and the trucks. So we had the flows and tires and other items. So you can see that that right there is $10,600 uh, increase, where our total is $19,695. The total budget increase from last year, $19,695. More than half of that is just that repair line, because we're concerned that that may happen again. Uh, and as you go right up to the very next line up, total training, you see 6850 there's another huge increase. And that is largely because, and I think that's a good sign, because we have people that want to be trained, people that need to be trained. So both in the ambulance, in rescue operations, as well as fire. So those two there are already more than three quarters of the increase. Everything else, if you really look through the chart, is sort of nominal. You can look through this, you can ask questions if you like. But those are the two big, big reasons why the increase there for the operations budget. Is there anything that I said that's confusing or questions? One minor note that patients work hard to realize. Uh, where we said on the bottom that our total increased request was $19,695. Mm -hmm. It's actually $1,000 less than that if you want to compare apples to apples. And that's simply because of the first page uh, Second from the top is computer and internet expenses. First one, maybe next year we'll get a lot of mm -hmm. But you can see where it says internet and website. Mm -hmm. Under our current budget, there is no number there. It just didn't happen in the chart. But actually, there should have been a budget because we paid $1,000 for it. So, so it, would have, it would have made the delta the difference, uh, $18,000. Again, nominal. Those are the kinds of small things that are in this page that, because of that translation, don't necessarily add up from last year. Big picture, truck maintenance and training. So, John, last time you mentioned there may be things in here that are what people would like but might not need as far as like you mentioned portables or other things. Yes. Uh, there are things. Um, <clears throat> do you have any sense of how many things there are on a wish list as opposed to a needs list? I think the communications line is the very first category, so the first set of batteries, mobile stage, and portables. The proposed here is $7,150, let's see. I have a feeling that line can go down, will go down. Uh, we've met several times. Our communications person was not able to meet, so we haven't been able to, to hone in a little more closely on that. I think that would be one. Uh, let's quickly do a quick brief uh, rundown right here. So communications would be a line we're going to be looking at a more closely. Computer and internet, that's pretty, that's pretty much spot on. That's what they are. Delivery, shipping is nothing. Equipment, uh, batteries for air packs. This is all. This is all pretty, pretty set. The gear line you can see is thirty-seven hundred and fifty dollars. So we have again pretty much set. That's the gear that's that we need. Yep, yeah. and that, that is a decrease. Miscellaneous again tools. Turnout gear. The last one boots. That stuff's expensive. Just to do a couple of sets of gear is that much. So. Equipment line, that's probably pretty close. Office, again, nowhere to go. Professional fees, that's minimal. Paramedic yeah, support. Thank you. Uh, turning to the page, we have air packs, cleaning, fire extinguishing, again, small totals. Actually less again. So if you see the total repair and maintenance for equipment is, is half what it was last year, and that's because one of the tools only has to be serviced every other year. So these are actually decreases. Supplies, again, the, the, the big line there is new EMTs, and that's the same as it was last year. So those, there really is not many other areas that can be greatly reduced. The training line, some of those are anticipated. The very first one is the driver CDL. 
There's a couple of people that would like to get their CDLs, whether they do or not, okay? But that's that's why that's there, where last year no one did it. Go ahead, Patricia. I should also say, um, here I just came up with these things they reduced rate for getting the CDL. Somebody else was offering like four like, or five hundred dollars. It's, and it's a lesser, it's a lesser grade, but right, it might it's be a it's a right, but it might be sufficient. A so, if you don't know it, permission to drive fire trucks, but not a big giant. And how is the tr how was the training budgeted? Was it based off of the highest potential of people to do certain trainings, or how is that number? People have been asking for things. Okay. For a period of time, and we need to get more drivers for the trucks now. <coughs> okay, so it's based on requests that you've had there to do trainings. Correct. Okay. And uh, and and lobbying on our part to list people to do it. Got it. The EMT line is we don't know. Well, the problem with the EMT training line is the regulations have changed this year. And right. The EMS. So it's, it's, yes, the EMS. So it may be um, the two new EMTs. We may not get an opportunity to get two new EMTs. We get fingers crossed we will. But the skills, etc., for the young are going to be way up. Okay. Everybody has to pay for their license, their their fees now. Mm -hmm. uh, and the big uh, change there is the bottom of the rescue line, $4,500, where we have nothing in the current budget. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, uh, training for uh, rescues on the river, ice, water, uh, ropes rescue. You need to go down to the bank and get people. There, there needs to be a budget for that. We need to do that. We had quite an interest last year. We had quite a few people trained in swift water. So that's, again, the rescue one why it's up so high. Vehicle maintenance we already reviewed. The ambulance line under vehicle maintenance, um, tires. We need tires for the ambulance, so that's why that line went went up to 5,900. It says A there. Mm -hmm. ambulance. The DOT line went down $5,000. Apparently, for however that works, they don't need as much cert DOT certification this year. And then again, the trucks uh, for that service. Vehicles other. You know, we have other vehicles besides the big trucks. We've got a boat, we have ATVs, we have brush truck, pickup truck, all things like that that are other vehicles that also should have a line in them. Back on the first page, under fire and police equipment, mm -hmm. it says 250 per new member. Do you know, how do you know how many new members are? Just a guesstimate. We don't, but what happens is somebody says, I'm interested in joining the fire department. I don't have any training, I'm not an EMT, I'm not, but I want to join. The first thing we do is we bring them in as fire police. It gets them into the department instead of just sitting in meetings. And so they come in and they get a certain amount of gear. They get a big stop sign, they got to have fluorescent and everything underneath the sun so they don't get hit by trucks when they're out there. They go through basic training. The training usually can get for a minimal amount, and they can do a lot of it online. But we, anybody new coming in, almost always, Get slid into fire police so they feel like they belong and they're part of the team right away. Until, because it takes a while to get the training. And we do have new members, and that would be, and actually, if you look, it's even down down from here before. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. It is, yes. Yeah. That was, that's why I was, yes. that's what caught my eye mm -hmm. because sure. I, I didn't know how you were figuring out. It's a guesstimate, I guess. That was John's guesstimate. He needs to want to charge John Bevins is our fire police. John Bevins is our Because he has some supplies now. That he figured he would need. Okay. Thank you. So, on the <coughs> on the repair budget, last year was a bad year, but we're budgeting overall significantly more than last year, and it may be possible to, um, if you have another bad year, apply in the end of the year to contingency or whatever to cover that. As an alternative, so um, putting it in the tax budget. Sure. I mean, it's up, it's I mean, just by a couple thousand, we're not talking sure. about that, but that's mm -hmm. a possible idea as well as the DOT test. Test last year, the actual was thirty-eight hundred, mm -hmm. as opposed to fifty-five thousand dollars. So that might be able to go down by a thousand. Mm -hmm. um, just a few things I think might be able to be scrutinized. The other thing that stood out are the ambulance. Tires really that expensive? I know I fell off and said I told you. Somebody are they really? Well, they're forty. They're they're forty eight hundred. Okay, I just bought tires for my vehicle that's similar. Okay. Was not quite that much, but it was thirty something, thirty five hundred something. 
and they might be a different grade for the ambulance. Uh -huh. The trouble of it down is that the, the ambulance weighs a tremendous amount. Right. And the weight is on them all the time. So that's why they wear out if they don't have it. I, don't I was think just that thinking. Made up. I think the people but I was just thinking that that's $800 a tire seems like a, like a lot. Say, not that's that's not impossible as long as somebody thinks sure. that's yeah, what the reality is. Sure. Okay. Uh, and from our perspective, in general, just in general, yeah. because it's the same categories, there's been a lot of work to get this far for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so I'm still viewing this a bit like it's this is still a work in progress. Right. This isn't here. We're here with our final proposal. Although our department has voted on this and approved it, doesn't mean we can't change it and shouldn't. So I just we need to make that clear because there's so much work this particular year in generating this that. That I, I agree, and we're also taxpayers, so it isn't like we're not trying to save money ourselves. Right. Um, so it's, uh, uh, if these notes we can. So there may be there may be uh, adjustments possible. There are, and actually, if if I might, this might be a good time to lead into adjustments upward as well. That would be on the. The two pages that Gordon referred to that came, there's one that's a Word document, it's going to be a letter, and then there's another page that looks like this. Okay. You might want to focus on that right now. And at the very top little, it looks like that, in the very top section that has the three items on it. These are things that have sort of uh, fallen through the wayside and they need to be addressed hazmat supplies, hose and fittings, and maintenance supplies for the higher houses. The hazmat supply, um, there, there's the whole capital budget that we're going to talk about, right? And we have on there <coughs> hazmat supplies and hose and fittings. The fact of the matter is these are things that are used every year. Hazmat supplies, a good example is a vehicle, we had one recently, a vehicle goes off the road into a pond or into a river or brook or water, furnace brook, whatever. They have to be these, they're called booms, and basically they're kind of like a flotation device, these long flotation devices that go in the water to contain spills. That's an item that's used, depending on how many hulls those are, those are used up for a year. So they're not really a capital thing. They should be in an annual operations budget. We used up recently, like the last of them, we don't have enough currently to cross the river in that, which is what we would have to do if something happened in the river. So we're going to be making a purchase very soon to get more of these booms so we can protect river and waterways. That, that, that's a number. There's five to 6,000 a year. That's a potential. Some year we might not need any at all. Yeah. Another year, if we have something in the river and something on Furnace Brook and something next to the know, we be there. So this is you know, bringing this up. Okay, there's a five to six for hazmat supplies. Hose and, and fittings are the same. They're annually tested. We don't really know when the hose is need to be replaced. All once they go to the test, you have to replace it. That could be a, easily a five or six thousand right there. And the maintenance supplies for the firehouses, that we talked about briefly Thursday. Um, we currently don't have a line anywhere that that if fire if the, um, the the members wish to do work at the firehouse, I'm currently doing a project where I'm hanging up some hose reels and things. I need to buy the supplies for that. So there should be a, a line for that kind of supply, not for big items, not big capital items, annual, small, scale, but numerous things that need to happen at the buildings. I should point out that wouldn't be for services. If that goes into more, if it was big, it would be something that the town would have to vote on, et cetera. But if it's just, we just need paint to finish something off, we'll, paint. Starting to rough, we'll do the paint, that sort of thing. This is just for supplies. Small things that we can and would do, but we need a line for the materials. So those three things should, in some fashion, be in this operations budget. In years past, the department has actually billed, as part of the call, the department has a right to bill for services rendered in a hazmat spill. Mm -hmm. And we've actually had our, our supplies replaced by the insurance company of the guilty party and to a lar very large degree, so. However, I've I talked to them this year, and Freddie and Crew said there's no way, they couldn't even get one way across the river, and you have to double cross. Well, that's a separate yeah. issue, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure that might be something as a DEP issue, because in reality, if there's a huge spill, they're probably calling a contractor yep. to do major work. Mm -hmm. um, 
of that scale. We need but to if, there's a call, if there's a call, spots. we need to have stuff, but okay. also we need to know there's an option of getting it reimbursed from yes. the people that go in the river mm -hmm. or into the brook right. as it stands. So we shouldn't have to make this an annual thing for down to zero, then we need to fix it. Mm -hmm. But we don't need to constantly to buy yeah, to budget for it because we should be getting it from <coughs> the people. And I can look in this year's budget, but I believe there is something in the maintenance line for general small repair. Sure, I mean, I think we're doing this year. Right. But and this would be something that would be good to have that we that but I mean, again, it would be. To buy this country. I don't need to. I think it would be awkward to, for the department to have to come to the town for hundred dollars for that kind of job. No, but there should be something like right now in the maintenance budget. There's general maintenance or building repair. That's where sure. it's appropriate for this that type of thing. If you need some paint or you sure. need a small project, there mm -hmm. should be money as there is for every building, mm -hmm. let alone two buildings, to do to account for major or, or basic it's, repair. I, I would and we'll have to break down the maintenance line. Yeah. to see where that sits, but I think we can do that yeah, in the... In, in so we can set up a line so we can track that. Right. Okay. Hose and fittings traditionally has been somewhere in the operations budget. But, yes. You know, yeah, hopefully the pump... That's why the, we had to, to right. put it in the operations budget. Right. I think the reason it's not in the operations budget is the fire department, particularly some of the officers were concerned that it was so large that the budget quite honestly would never get passed. So they said, well, take that out. That's a big number. And I said, well, you know, it's really not a capital item. It's really a... a right. We'll have to see how many of those... What is last year's history? Uh, and it, with that one in particular, again, last year is not a good indicator because of this issue. Mm -hmm. So we don't put it but in... But actually, we had a pretty big chunk last year. I don't know if it was running, but I did have it, yeah. But that's the kind of thing that if you only look at a previous year where it was like booms would have, okay, then all at once you need them. So it's not budgeted, but where, where does that fall if there's a budget? But I, I think also a yearly average, we look back a couple of years, we do host testing every year, we can sort of see what we spend from year to year consistently. Mm -hmm. And if, say, mm -hmm. we lose a lot of hose, I'd rather view that as an emergency, a mm -hmm. contingency thing that we would then, mm -hmm. again, we tax tax for the average mm -hmm. and then assume sure. the responsibility for the catastrophic. And, and I think that this is a good point to clarify that um, however the town wants to budget for it and anticipate it right. is really in your camp and the board of finance. And it's up to us to make sure that you're aware of these are the potentials. Last year's hosting was 7400. 7400, yeah. So on this big wide page, that's where you say remove. So those two items. Those two things we pulled out, we pulled out, it should still happen to be on your page. So yeah. it but it seems to me like they should be somewhere. They should be somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because be somewhere. it really is going to happen. We point, don't know how much, but. And even if the department of the town wanted to make a general contingency for the fire department, it could, could be something like that. Again, yeah. however, however the boards wish to and provide for this, it's fine. We just felt that uh, this is much more than you have seen in the past, this mm -hmm. document. It's, it's, mm -hmm. This, is, this mm -hmm. is new. This page that we were just looking at, the three at the top and these other items, these are all things that we're finally bringing before the town in a more formal way mm -hmm. that we're going to be continually updating so that it's less and less of a surprise as these things happen. However you want to budget for it, whether it's taxes, contingency, whatever, that's that's up to up to these your your departments. Yeah, I just I think with the capital budget, we weren't sure that you were aware, you know, the millions that are sunk into that thing. So we tried to put down everything, also to catch us. This last year we got caught because we had air bottles that had expired. They had to be replaced. The town didn't have the funds, so thirty three thousand came out of the department funds. So this we won't be able to do anymore going forward because although we have a cushion in there now. We have decided that we cannot, since we pay for the ambulance, the town doesn't. We're going to start taking the, the funds that we have set aside. Before we get to the capital, can we just finish up on this page? Okay. Um, so my thought on that is, it sounds like this hazmat supplies. Do we know, are we out of booms and stuff, or we're low? That we are, I don't know, if we're 100% out, but they said that they were very low. They were pricing Right, and it seems like um, people's driving is getting worse, not better. Uh, as far as our responses of, of things that we really are doing more 
crashes, spills, for various reasons of distracted driving. So I would think that is an issue that could be tackled this year to get us up to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's the case and we're out of stuff that we need, for, not that we're going to protect the entire Housatana, but we certainly can protect Furnace Brook mm -hmm. and do our usual stuff, then we should, I'd be receptive to getting that up to snuff by the end of this fiscal year. We still have 18,000 currently in so, for the CDFD. Right, so, so I would. Those could be purchased this year, but it's a, again an example of these are things that may be used on an annual basis. Right, so I would think if we get, work on that this year, we could take care of that and get that going. Mm -hmm. uh, we have hose and fittings budgeted somewhere this year, but we could look at that as an annual amount, probably as fire department equipment. And then maintenance, we can look at last year's budget and make sure we have some money for small projects. So that would be a way to address those <coughs> three items. Okay? For this, I mean, get them going now and, and going forward. That's how we would make this, how we would deal with that. But I think, uh, I think what we probably should do is put those three things in the operations budget so they're listed. Well, not necessarily the dollar ones, but we need to have them itemized somewhere so that... We I mean, we're, we're going to do that anyways, because that's, for us, we, yeah. we need to know we have all the housing fittings that we need to replace. Right. We have hazmat things that need to be replaced. So, again, however, the numbers fall, it is... I think we'll numbers. learn more. If we if we try to bring it up now, we'll know actually what we need more. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this process will be much yeah. easier next year once we have gone through a season with a current category. Right. Okay. Any other questions on these fairly small items until um, that are covered by our budget by um, this letter. <coughs> yeah. So we're good. Okay. So on to the big spreadsheet there. <coughs> I said all right, to be revised. So we have a capital proposed capital budget and would I'm sorry to cut you off, Casey, but I wanted to get this done sequentially. So, do you have a pitch for this for the capital big piece of paper? Was set up for information. We aren't asking you to set that money aside. We just want you to be aware that those are the numbers that can hit us. You know, it may not hit us all at the same time. Maybe, as some of them, I said, we have no idea how long some of the things are going to last. We put them in so you're aware that that's the potential liability that you have out there in the town. And, uh, and to, to follow up with that, um, we, the short answer is we do. We are not. We don't have a capital budget proposal right now. Mm -hmm. We're not. We're not asking. We're not presenting you with the numbers. Just, just the patience to create this chart was huge because if you look, you know, your line you have like one truck, a, a truck's line for capital and, and maybe equipment. There's nothing like this kind of detail. So a lot of people put a lot of time in to try to get these numbers on this page to begin this process. Right now we have $240,000 I think in the truck budget. Mm -hmm. And that is, if you see the second line down, it says 3-0 pumper. I think that's the next one to be replaced. So the 240000 was put, I think 80000 a year, is that right? Mm -hmm. what we're doing? Um, that 240000 is currently there is basically in your existing capital budget to replace the real pump. And mm -hmm. that will happen in five years or so. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing that we have, that's the only thing that we have that's that's on this page, and certainly for the trucks. The equipment budget, you also have a line, I think, right, for equipment capital. But it's nothing like this kind of detail. So, so this really is a beginning and uh, for awareness, it's not a proposal or a request. Okay. The only thing that's really, as I said before, is we, we, we bought all the bottles, but the other part of the equipment is the pack that the bottles go into. They cost $8,000 a piece, and there's 16 of them? 16 of them. 16 of them. Those are the things the firefighters wear when they go to the building. It's yeah. like scuba gear. So, so those are going to, they all come due in what, four years? Things four years they have to be replaced by the law. Air pack sixteen at eight thousand. Yep. Okay. So that's a it's kind of a big heads up. Mm -hmm. That's a legal requirement. We have to shut them down even if they still function. So 
with that, I think what's good about this is it's very good to lay all these things out as far as, you know, big broad sweeps of things, the years, how old stuff is, how long should they last. I think it's great to have it here. Yeah, I think going forward as we're looking at, um, when I totaled this up, it's somewhere, it's several million dollars mm -hmm. of proposed possible expenditures. I think also that the the challenge is meeting the needs with increasingly expensive equipment <coughs> and also making sure we're spending town resources in ways that are uh, appropriate and I think that the challenge going forward is to base our expenditures small and particularly large on what our experience is as a town and as a department um, such as if if we have unfortunately we don't have at this point we have about 10 maybe people certified to use air packs so should we be buying 16 should we be buying a rescue truck to house those extra air packs to make it bigger and have a $400,000 rescue truck instead of a $250,000 rescue truck. So there are options in here. Should we be getting the standard very large custom built pumpers with all bells and whistles and everything we can think about on there or should we have a more modest, smallest apparatus as our, you know, to reflect our calls of the day as far as sure. more car accidents, more automatic alarms, more remote driveways, less barn fires and that kind of stuff so again i think it's an opportunity to look at where we are um, what calls are we going on and what are the appropriate you know expenditures because these are large on the top line what's sort of interesting if we when i total these up even at these larger numbers you have about one little over two million dollars worth of, of apparatus there if we spend if the life cycle if the life cycle of these apparatus is roughly 25 years and if we put aside eighty thousand dollars a year we magically come up with two million dollars so i don't i don't think we're catastrophically off i think what where we are maybe a part is we're looking at doing this over a long period of time as opposed to front loading these costs and paying for for like for example i don't think we historically would start paying for a truck 23 years before its replacement time. We tend to do larger chunks closer to the time. And that way we have more time to spread these out mm -hmm. and that makes it a more a more balanced truck budget as opposed to having 275 the first year and 63,000 the last year. We'd like to sort of hit a, a comfortable point, gradual increases, not spikes in one year. So it's good to hear this is a planning document more than a, a budget request. And again, it's, uh, even that, uh, it goes back to what I said earlier, really, it's planning documents the key. It's your trucks, it's the town trucks, it's not the department's trucks. So the request is, is a little bit, it's not, it's, this is information of what these things will cost. It might almost be better for the town to view what it wants to spend in an annual budget for, for emergency services. Then that number, okay, town or fire department, you have available to you $150,000 to spend to meet the whatever need to meet the needs. How will you choose to use that? Because who, who's going to determine the the who determines the pumper? Who determines that? So if is it officers of the company that should determine that or not? We don't have to go further than that here, but. You know, it's, has it's a good question, but I think you know a half, you know, a six hundred thousand dollar expenditure has to be justified to the taxpayers Absolutely. through the selectmen and the finance board. Absolutely. So there has to be. It's not just sort of like here's one hundred fifty thousand dollars every year. Mm -hmm. It's more let us hear about what the situation is and how mm -hmm. we can work together to fund it and meet sure. the challenges. I think is what we're sort of going at, and there's going to be a bunch of different opinions mm -hmm. on how we can meet that and how we should meet that. Um, and I think the important thing for us this year was acknowledging that, that no one had adequate information. 
no one had this chart before. And so, even though it's all huge, the fact is we've been operating with this chart unknown for years. It, these things have been there all the time. We just haven't had official results. So that's why it's not a request. I'm not asking for a spike. I'm asking for anything. We're presenting information for the first time. It's much more comprehensive than expected. So um, in the next drop down of miscellaneous equipment, where they a lot of things are listed, like um, a new extrication tool, a new boat, um, wet water suits, ATVs, um, auto pulse, um, things that aren't uh, vehicles. Historically, the, the the fire department raised money every year, and a lot of these things have been built, have been bought by the fire company. Mm -hmm. So that's another question. I think patience was going to start out with talking about funding the ambulance and stuff. So again, whether... We do have some money, and we are now going ahead. You saw in the budget, the third page of the budget is our operating budget. Like that. Right. HIV, and that's on a mm -hmm. Plus, we're going to start putting $25,000 a year into the ambulance fund. So that when the ambulance goes in, it will be... When the time comes to replace the ambulance, we actually have the funds there. We don't have to go nuts for the drives like we had the last couple of times. The other thing is, um, yeah, that's, that's our general work. fundraising is down as well as oh, yeah. it is national. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think also, but historically we have always been able to fundraise an ambulance also by focusing several years of fundraising to get that, as opposed. Right, to not, but I, that's, that's that is that is that is, right. that is a departmental thing. Right. But I guess the question there is, what previously the department has bought, then you're saying now the town will buy a boat and ATVs and other stuff that the department has Again, fundraised. It's a question. It's, it's, a it's question. whose responsibility it yeah. is it to purchase any of it? You know, even the ambulance or like the bottles that the department purchased last year. Um, it, it may be the department does purchase, but is that really the responsibility of the company? Or the and again, it could be all debated. I think tonight is mainly to make sure that you see what these items are. If someone is uh, trying to find a piece of paper, we just got a thing from, you know, the fi the a lot of these things, the compressor and the air packs originally 20 years ago were bought by a grant from the federal government, the fire service grant and we've had a issue when we've tried to apply, we've tried to apply for education tools and every time it comes back that the department has enough money that to buy it itself so then we're not getting federal grant. So the question is can you sequester some of the money into an account so we don't look quite so flush or else what other companies do is run with less money and then they're eligible to get federal grants and federal and state money as we have in the past to get some of these large things, or they even get ambulances and fire trucks. I mean, there are other places that have heard Lakeville County, they're actually getting a whole ambulance with a federal grant. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, KCS, it's, KCS I, can't, KCS I can't, maybe we don't, but maybe well, we could, we still need to think about that mm -hmm. as, a, as a possible yes. revenue. Yeah. So well, I think to spend the, what we have as a backup right now. So, and then we have to spend the money to We are still able, through the generosity of the people and what we have for our backlog, not to have to bill for the ambulance. But if that goes away, then we're going to be billing, and then it'll be a whole different ballgame. Because a lot of people won't work for an organization, won't volunteer for an organization that's billing. Well, they, they may not contribute. So, so you can pay. To be specific with that, so you just follow up so people know, there's what, 169 municipalities in the state. So there's a lot of ambulance services there, paramedics or whatever. There's something like six or eight only left that no longer, that, that still don't bill. And many of them are, are not this one. You know, our, our towns up here that are the last holdout that we don't charge for the patient. Not even sure it's six. Right? So that's how rare it is in today's world uh, to be a non-billing thing. So it's a great service to provide for a town that we 
we don't build for that, that world. So we're pretty, we're pretty quite right now. Yeah. Anyway, so again, uh, I don't even know if you, if there are, if have questions on this, it might be preliminary to have questions, but it's more information for the capital. So on the capital stuff, somewhere in the paperwork, the, the, oh, the, back to this, the original document there, there was a, there was on this uh, document on page three, I think there's a capital thing on the bottom, which talked about some of the things <coughs> we just talked about as far as hose and fittings. Um, we could look at um, that and trying to do the hazmat this year, get that taken care of by a couple of air packs instead of four. Think about the numbers we have for people. Um, that would be 16,000 instead of 32. And then we could put in 6,000 for hose and fitting. Uh, if I could ask you, Gordon, yes. the firefighter. Yes. Yes. Um, I understood that the air packs were not just for us, that right. if, if there's a big fire and other, all, all large fires would have mutual aid, other companies mm -hmm. would come and help. So that we also provide the packs for the fires, for, for the firefighters that come through our calls, is that true? Well, if somebody comes, awesome. my understanding is if somebody shows up that hasn't had a chance to get their own gear and their own pack, they will use other air packs. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to. Um, I have a quick question. Yes. How many ambulance runs do you make on year on average? 260 was, I think, a year ago. This year's been down a little bit. Right. I mean, I didn't know they were free. Thank God I haven't had to need, I haven't needed one. But do we send out a letter, or do you send out a letter saying, do you know this is a free service? However, you know, if you're able to, could you make a donation? Yeah, the appeal letter goes out every oh, year. Okay. Okay. And, I've never had and it raises there. about forty to fifty thousand dollars. So it's a serious, a serious okay. appeal. Okay. Yeah, all us, the, all us willing to take contributions. Yeah. And patients oh. is also one who often generates that letter, so that's. Um, that's good to hear. We haven't done that recently. I don't think I put in that it's a free service. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, I have no idea. Do that. Yeah. I've never had to utilize it. So. If the paramedics come, then they would bill if part yep. of our call. Mm -hmm. But Cornwall itself, and it's interesting because if you're on a call, you'll often see people, if they can refuse the call, they can refuse treatment. And you can get a sense of when people don't want to go because of the money. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, oh, yeah. we'll remind them and see this is, you know, we don't charge for the service. And then that might sway them and they'll actually. No, I think it's great. Which I'm they should do. You know, they should go get the treatment when they don't want to. Okay. That was it. I'm serious. Good. Okay. So then, um, then carrying on. So we have three. We have to nail down our capital budget. Um, we have the operations, the, the ambulance things, what you're feeling on numbers for there. John said there's some flexibility in this. I say we should, we can submit it as is. We could make a slight reduction or not. Um, well, overall, we're looking at what, an 8% increase? For the department or for the town? The pu public safety, I'm looking at the line item 184. Yeah, on these two lines, you're seeing a 31% increase and a 12% increase. So those those two lines are increasing um, more than than any other part of the budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I feel if you feel like there are places that you feel comfortable reducing, that can be a proposal back to them. Right. I don't see why not. Um, you know, I definitely think it's an interesting, I think it'd be an interesting thing to see the trend of like, like this capital or the budget that they just created for us is really interesting. I'd like to see it, you know, against like the actual calls and what's happening, you know, on a day to day basis. Break down on. Yes, to see that sort of go parallel yes. would be interesting to me. Okay. Um, because it seems like the ambulance is where we're really, we're using that more than right. all the fire department stuff. Not fire department, but the fire trucks and all that. Um, but, you know, I trust that they work very hard on their budget. So, you know, if those small decreases that you suggested, you're comfortable with them, I'm fine to propose that back to them. Right. I don't so, know how much that saves yeah. us in the end. Yeah, I think like if we go down four thousand dollars, with the understanding that if they need it and we track it, which I will more carefully because we pay attention to areas under pressure. Right. Um, and if you know, I said if they if they blow all the hose off the back of a truck, then the town will make it happen. If you know, if we have to go to a town meeting or whatever we need to do um, to keep everything up. But I think going, the whole key to the thing is planning for the future mm -hmm. and what is the thing of that. So I think it could absorb that amount through cuts or with an understanding, if the, as which is already in place, if they have a major um, repair, then the town will, will pay for the major repair as opposed to budget for the major repair, hoping the major repair won't happen. Well, <clears throat> I don't think it's that much money, but I'd like to see us include in the budget some of the hazmat mm -hmm. monies that they, that when patients wrote, we don't know where to put this. I think that should be included in the budget. She's talking about five to six thousand a year on hazmat supplies and another five to six on the holes and fittings. And I, I think that's, it doesn't sound like an exaggeration. And I'd right. kind of like to feel that that's covered. Right. Well, I, I think what we're not, the way we can cover that is, again, what I'd like to see is a report of how much 
they actually need and yeah. cover it this year. I mean, if we need it now, I mean, we have hose that's working until somebody tests it and finds yeah. out it's not. We have pumps that are working until somebody runs it. I mean, we do every year. We send the trucks out to get the brakes test, to get the pumps test. That's where you know they get an annual check. Mm -hmm. But as I said, if we can deal with the hazmat stuff, get a proposal back to them because we're having a good year overall in mm -hmm. the town. Let's deal with it this year <coughs> as opposed with the money that's been <coughs> appropriated tax for so it gets done. Mm -hmm. yes. And then again, if we can get going forward, somebody goes and Furnace Brook, you yeah. talk to their insurance company. Because yeah. again, I know we had, I won't go into all stories, but um, I believe we have that capacity to bill people for our time. It's a major deal, let alone our equipment. So. That's the way I would handle the hazmat, and then we'd put $5,000 or something in capital for the hose okay. thing and put in for, for a couple of air packs, see what yeah. the real deal is on that. So we start that process. I think that would I'm cover us pretty well. That. I like that. Okay. So that's our three-prong. I agree on that, I think. Our three-prong approach. So we would drop the 69000 down to, yeah, we could take... A thousand for the from the ambulance and three thousand from the other line, and that's sixty-six. So that would be that reduction, and then somewhere. What page are you on? I'm on page four of six of our budget in this in this document. So oh, and that one. Sixty-six and. And then went down to thirty. Okay. Yeah. So. So what we have to do tonight is finish our homework and get this document back to Barbara with some final numbers so then she can get it out to the Board of Finance okay. to draft. So if we, on page four, line 177 would be yeah. 66 and line 178 would be 30. And then we flip over to the We flip over to our capital budget and we have CVFD equipment repair. <coughs> that, um, again, I think we could, we're talking 16,000 for air packs, 6,000 for hose and fittings, that's 22,000. Uh, we could, we, as you can see on that last page, mm -hmm. we already have accumulated in there over a long period of time, eighteen thousand dollars are in that account right now. Um, so that could cover the hazmat. That could cover. It could cover the hazmat, but more likely, it could cover next year's most of next year's expenditure. Okay. Okay. Either way, or we could we could split take some out of there for the hazmat stuff this year. So yeah, that's a good idea. So maybe we, we reserve. If we have twenty-two thousand dollars worth of expenditures, we reserve approximately four thousand for the hazmat stuff. Yeah. That leaves us with an appropriation of seven thousand in there for this year's fire department equipment and repairs. And yeah. You know, I think as and we can adjust that as things um, as the process goes along, but that at least address most of the requests. That's good. Okay, so that's one area. The second, okay, so that's it for the fire department. We're pretty good. Mm -hmm. For now, again, we've got a lot of time till May. Yeah. Uh, next is yeah, fire department. Uh, the other thing that came in that I sent you a copy of was the request from the Economic Development Commission. Did you get that? I did. That, that they're requesting $7,500 for next year's budget. That comes out of line 128. That's put in there. There at that line. We hadn't really gone over that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little hesitant to increase that line seeing the current expenditures and last year's expenditures being under 2000 And I'd be glad to go, and I don't, I wasn't the last meeting. I don't think, have they discussed next year's budget at a meeting? 
we did get Janet's email of some of their got plans. Got her email later at night, yeah. but but I don't think we got the actual. This is tying the priorities to a budget. No, I haven't seen that, but I've right. been to a meeting. So, any thoughts on upping it, keeping it the same? Um, I'm I'm happy to keep it the same at, at this juncture. Right. Um, considering it came in so low, that realized budget. Um, sorry, what? What line item is it? This is 128. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, I mean, unless, you know, I'd be happy, and I, I guess I should have asked this before our meeting, but things slipped. I'd be happy to see, a, you know, a more expansive request with, you know, well, what each thing is going to cost, you right. know, and the plans for each each item that is suggested. Right. I think that's a good response to this, and then we can discuss yeah. it at the next meeting, which is the end of this month, and we still have time to. I mean, we're talking fair again, fairly small numbers, but you know, right? It does it, they do add up after a while, so we should, if we can say we're going to hold it the same, but if you can give us a great presentation on how several thousand dollars more will yeah. give us this, mm -hmm. then we'll look at that. Yeah, because I don't want to stagnate. If there's something that's like about to be, you know, put into place, right. I don't want to hinder that for them. Sure. Well, this year, it looks like they had a budget of 5195 and they've only spent 1300 right. 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 So they really haven't, and I've been on that committee. And except for doing, which was not well done in terms of a lot of errors, that market insert, which was in this month's Cornwall Chronicle, I don't know what they've done to reach out. And I do know <clears throat> that Janet had said, she and she said she was going to talk to you about, she'd like to hire someone to work as an economic person just strictly for Cornwall. And I don't know if that was... I don't think that could possibly be part of the 7,500. So I don't know where she is yeah, on that. So I think there needs to be more discussion. Yeah, so I agree. Leave it, Absolutely. leave it at last year until we talk. Yeah, yep. agreed. Right, okay. Yep. Uh, so the next and last, well, then we have the next thing that came up this morning was this this work spreadsheet, um, which is the food and fuel fund. So uh, here's, did I send you these? This is, I may yeah. not have because it's big oh, and bulky. I got some <coughs> and it some just Heather, started this year. Um, oh no, this is, okay, this is different. So, I've sat down because uh, the treasurer and I oversee the food and fuel fund with Heather just to find out where things are going financially and are we meeting the needs of people in Cornwall. So, we did look at things and the one, the top set of numbers is last year's 12 month figures. Um, the important highlighted figure was we started last year with about $54,000. Um, somewhere in here it tells you that um, we started year 54 and we spent we spent about um, $43,000 total which is the far right column is the total column. So you can see here, here's all the expenses, heat, groceries, rent, electric, medical, utilities. These are uh, for people that are having trouble paying their bills. Um, and then, uh, so we spent about $43,000. So we started, but we did have um, 
forty-one thousand dollars come in. So we we ended the year with about forty-one thousand dollars already to carry over. Uh, so the numbers have been going down somewhat, and the need has been going up. So at the current time, after seven months of the capital of the fiscal year, um, we have, we're about $22,000 of our balance. We'd like to be more than that, um, but we have been, the balance has been going down. We did double the amount of money we spend every month for uh, the food pantry, probably if you think of this as about a $50,000 budget, probably half of that is going to buy groceries at the food pantry, servicing currently about 130 Cornwall residents. Um, and that number has doubled in the last year. We've got um, a better program, we've got more need. Heather points out to the fact that the administration has cut back severely the food stamp program. And that has had a direct local impact. Uh, the other thing people may not know that we do not have a um, summer meals program here. There are people that, um, there are other towns that have a meals program for uh, kids going to school um, in the summertime. We're looking at, we also did bring in through applications about $40,000 from other federal and state fuel funds to supplement people so we're not just supplementing people's food and fuel needs out of this, but we are applying individually and collectively for federal and state grants. Um, so my thought looking at this is we probably, we've had in the past, we've been able to fund this entirely with donations. Mm -hmm. We probably aren't gonna be able to do this without cutting the amount we provide, which I think, uh, I don't know, somebody smarter than me said that the measure of a government is how they provide for the most vulnerable people. And from the start, the Board of Selectmen's job before there was United States was to keep people from starving in the winter. And then when people first got here, the first 30 years, it was really rough. So we're not back at those times, but it's still, when the safety nets go away, the local safety net is the most important. So I would think at this point, talking to Heather, putting in about $10,000 into next year's budget to supplement this, to keep the amount at the food pantry up is very important. Uh, we cap out our, our uh, donations to each family at $1,500, which doesn't go a long way in some cases. There have been some emergencies where we've had to go over that amount um, at her recommendation. But I think, uh, the times come that we probably should put this for consideration into the budget. We're going to, we did put an insert in the Chronicle. We'll continue to publicize the need. But again, I think it's a realistic, if you talk about experience-based budgeting, this is our experience right now is, I mean, it wasn't the food pantry when I started Selectman was about the size of that closet, if not smaller. And now we have 130 people coming weekly from this town, not from outside. So I think um, I would like to see us put that in next year's budget. It's not a huge amount, but I think it would be important to make sure this happens. So I would put it that in line 170, um, $10,000, replacing what says CHMA. We don't give them anymore. We would give this amount to that. So you would put $10,000? $10,000 in that. Just for a reference, um, <coughs> Barbara does work, Herbs does also work down in Kent and said the town of Kent does give $10,000 to their food pantry. They have mm -hmm. a Kent Community Fund, which does do a lot of food support too. But that is not, each one of these towns sort of deals with it separately, differently. But I think this is a reasonable amount because the other thing, too, is that a lot of people going to the food pantry, that's their only support the town gives them. It, it 
in a way stabilizes things so they don't have to then get fuel assistance mm -hmm. or rent assistance or whatever else. So I think whatever we can do to keep that um, running well um, is a good thing. We have, we've also had people be very generous this year in their donations, which hopefully will keep coming. So, agreed to that idea? Absolutely. Yes. Good. So then, the last little thing is <coughs> it talked about the capital stuff. So we are at, we are putting in seven thousand for fire department equipment on top of what we already have in that account. Okay. Okay. So any other changes to the budget? We're ready to go to the board of finance. See what happens. Okay. Great. All right, Jonathan, still awake? Good. Hope everybody's following this at home. Still awake at the camera? Good. Whoa. <laughs> Great. So now, um, next thing is WMC contract extension. Um, we tabled that from our last meeting. I did send you some updated uh, reports since we last met, which I didn't make copies of, but I assume you got, there was a letter back to WMC from USDA saying you need to do work in a bunch of categories. Uh, first on the list was site selection. It said address, mm -hmm. talked to Steve. They said they're not so much hung up on the address as they want an approximate location. Okay. Uh, at the same time, I put out a letter to people that had expressed a willingness to be considered and we got four or five people back saying that they would allow seem like everybody that you wrote to today yeah. agreed. Yeah, that was good. Pretty much, pretty much. We got a good response. We got four or five people in the village that have expressed an interest in uh, being considered. So there's obviously work to be done. So the question is, does the board want to move ahead with the contract extension now or not? Next week we have the sewer committee meeting and mm -hmm. I think we really should present it to them and let the sewer commission uh, have the say. Um, I've had several phone calls from citizens saying that uh, they thought the town meeting last year approved a $10,000 expense to cover the application and all this and to look at another six thousand looks like a sixty percent increase and that might be an exaggeration but it I'm getting more negative feedback than positive so my feeling is I'd like it to if I remember correctly where's my book I think next week they have a meeting at five and then yeah. we have a selectman's meeting at 7.30. I think that's on that's correct. On the 18th, next Tuesday, a week for it. The 5 p.m. is the sewer meeting, and then the 7.30 is the selectman's meeting. And I think it's that, that letter should be shown to the a sewer uh, committee and let them discuss it, and hopefully they'll agree. I mean, I would like to go forward. Right. I, yeah. okay. But I, I do think we should cut them out. We shouldn't step in as selectmen and ignore a committee that's been working for three years on this. Marina? Yeah, I mean, that was my initial reaction to this. Um, I, and this by no means says that we're halting the progress. I mean, we're waiting you know, a week, and we have a meeting right after their meeting. Mm -hmm. I just, my concern about this is not that I don't trust what the money is going towards and what the work is going to be. Um, I, throughout this whole project, really feel like our, and I've said this before, our, stum our potential stumbling blocks to moving this forward are unexpected expenditures. Um, and for me, I think to be as transparent and you know accommodating to everyone who's been working on this is very important to me um, and I really don't I don't think this is going to be a, 
uh, a roadblock. Um, and ultimately, I think we can go with the, the, the septic committee's recommendation, but it's up to us if we want to approve this. Correct. So I'd rather I, hear from them first. Okay. I think the important thing is to establish it is our decision. It is, yes, because I understand. Because ultimately we call the town meeting and it'd be a shame to shut things down because people are, are feeling negative. I don't think that... But I think I have no problem with hearing a few more things, but I would also like to keep... I would like to keep things moving forward. And again, if we don't approve it tonight, then there's no... There's not much for Steve to report other than we submitted an application, so it's going to be a fairly short and not that interesting meeting. But to but, me, that's worth it. Okay. I already have a decision in mind on mm -hmm. this. Yeah. But if I don't, if I don't hear from everybody who's been working on it for three years, I feel like I haven't done my homework. You want to call witnesses? Yes. <laughs> Got it. Um, and I would just feel more comfortable on, you know, ultimately I think my decision will remain mm -hmm. the same, but I think it's important to let this be discussed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll wait till next week. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Good. So then, um, so I will, I will forward with good wishes the uh, letters saying these are the people that are interested. Steve has walked the properties good. and hopefully he will Great. have some enlightening words yeah. about these things. So in his time he can maybe give us yeah. some updates. Okay, update sites. Uh, cost annual meeting. Priscilla and I, able thank to go? You. Okay. No problem. So but thank you for forwarding me the other stuff for Goshen. Oh. Oh, yes, I did send it to you. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. So who's going to the cost meeting? Uh, Priscilla and Gordon are going. And so are you going to RSVP for us? Because yeah, I we'll set that up. Yes. Yeah, okay. we were waiting. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. The public has arrived. We are at that point. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, urge the uh, selectmen uh, to consider uh, sure that they're delighted to hear that uh, I will be uh, unable to attend the West Point Acceptor Committee next week. Uh, <laughs> but there are some points I would like to uh, put forward since I won't have an opportunity to do it there. Um, I do think that uh, it's obvious from the uh, material that Todd distributed to the committee um, that when the uh, application went into USRDA, their first question was, uh, and I'm just reading from uh, the email, proposed facility site. I need the address, writes the person from rural development. <coughs> How will one acre be required to be paid for? Is it part of this application? I will tell you, the committee has been told repeatedly, repeatedly, that it is not necessary for us to have a location in order to do this application. I don't know how you could characterize that as that anything other than intentional misleading. It just seems extremely difficult to find a way why we would have been told that uh, when clearly it, it, it wasn't the case. In addition, item eight on the list of 10 questions that were sent back says town vote, vote was in all capitals, question mark. What is the status? I would need the authorized resolution. Does that mean we have to have the town vote before we submit it to USDA? In other words, I, then it says item 10 is a development plan. Need the town's development plan, which will indicate the town's plan to grow. How much growth is indicated in the uh, POCOD? I don't know. Are we going to have answers for this? I mean, and as I said, there were 10 specific questions that they asked uh, when this was submitted. I think that goes to the question of how well or how poorly this application was put together. And I think it was disappointing. We also, I think, failed to take advantage of Barbara Herbst's expertise. She told the board 
that she had done submissions like this for her, for the town of Kent. And we didn't use her. Instead, we paid WMC. And remember, we paid WMC $20,000, not just $10,000 already. Now we're going to pay them another $6,000. But we never had money when we asked for several thousand dollars to get a second opinion on the proposal. There was never any money for that. And I think that's wrong. And I think that as the Board of Selectmen, I would urge you, since as Gordon has pointed out, you have the decision, you use the committee only for cover and not for real advice because you don't give us the expertise we need to make the best possible decisions. When we are asking, another one of these items in here says, um, item six, O&M is a flat $100,000. I know this is a brand new system, but I need to know the O&M broken down to some of the line items generally in O&M, such as wages, chemicals, utilities, administrative office, etc. Well, we absolutely know that utilities weren't included in the estimate. So I mean that $100,000 is way underestimating. And then they ask about uh, uh, the reserve for uh, short-lived assets, one to five years, five to 10 years generally. These are pumps, valves, and other needed replacements. Why is this important? Because we're looking at asking every taxpayer in the town of Cornwall to pay for this. Not once, but forever. And I think that raises the bar in terms of our responsibility to do a good job. And I think we need a second opinion. I think the Board of Selectmen should make, if you want to give $6,000 more to WMC, you'll make that decision, which seems to be already the decision that you already made. But you, I believe, really should make an additional amount and if Barbara said there was money available, how much more money is available? Maybe you don't even need to take it from somewhere else. All of a sudden, there's $6,000 for Steve. I think you really are doing the whole community a disservice. This is a multi-million dollar project. This is a change in the tax burden of every homeowner in Cornwall. And that's you know, I've spent my time on the committee not because I was going to have a personal gain from a building in Cornwall, West Cornwall, like some of my fellow board members will have a financial gain. Good for them. I'm not against people having gains, but I am against asking everybody to pay for it without having raised ourselves and our decision to the highest possible level of thoroughness. We owe that to all the people who vote in this town. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? Well, quickly, I guess. Um, why hasn't there been a second opinion? I mean, as she said, I mean, it's a huge expenditure for the town. And listen, you want a second opinion before you get a knee operation. I mean, if we're you know, looking to tax people for the next 20 to 50 years, I mean, maybe it would be a good idea to get it independent. You know, second opinion. We have done, I would, we don't do a lot of back and forth talk, but we have done significant due diligence looking at other communities, talking to state and other engineers. So we have done, I think, some good due diligence to get us to where we are at this point. But do we have, do we have any studies that we can read? I mean, uh, there should be an engineer's analysis of, of all of this. Yeah, there's a whole report from the engineer on the Cornwall website. Is it public? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're going to access there. it. It's on the cornwallct.org, right okay, near this film. It. Okay. And it's up there. It's been there for years. There's actually video. What are interesting are the videos of the meetings that happened this summer where people talked and there were presentations made on the issue. But there is a factual um, discussion. But from one point of view, there is no second opinion. Okay, any more public comments? Hearing none, I'll make a motion to adjourn at four minutes to seven. Home in time to see most of Jeopardy. There you go. <laughs>